What up, what up, what up, what up? You have just entered the war zone. There's a lot going on in the war zone, and I want to explain this. You got your man Lil C's that most recently did an interview with the Art of Dialogue. And, you know, I casually came across this interview and proceeded to view it. You know, I've never spoke anything about Little C's or anything. Po- I never spoke anything negative about Little C's at all. I, I never even had that in my head. I always felt like, you know, Little C's was, you know, a good dude. You know, that I felt like, you know, that was Big's man and Big was my man, like as far as me being a fan of Big. So, you know, it was like that, man. You know, East Coast, West Coast thing going on. You know, I was riding with the East Coast, you know, at that time. And, um, you know, C's, in my eyes, was always, you know, just a a good dude. You know what I'm saying? Just from what I kind of knew about him. Before all of the late shenanigans by Lil C's. And, uh... You know, I was listening to this uh, interview and, you know, some eyebrow raising things were said by Little C's, you know, and it wasn't who he was talking about that really had my eyebrows raised. At the end of the day, it was it, it, it did become who he was talking about. However, it was what he was saying that really, really had me like huh so I'm going to play this interview right now for you and we're going to go through it and dissect it I'm going to also play excerpts from Gene Dill okay because Little C's started to talk about Gene Dill for whatever reason and uh, Gene Dill came back and defed, defended himself and did a pretty, pretty strong job at that. I mean, he got right to C's. I mean, he got right to the point. And uh, he, he burnt it up with that one, with that, and you know. And uh, I just want you to see this. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm going to play this interview with little c's i'm gonna chime in here and there and here we go in atlanta after tupac died and he said that um y'all was mm-hmm. smoking weed in the hotel and he was saying that um biggie was telling him how much love he had for Pac. give me a detailed account of the incident that snoop was talking about oh we, we, we was in atlanta i mean i'm the one that made it happen you should see another interview where snoop talked about it i'm the one that made it happen because i was actually downstairs in the lobby and I ran into Snoop, and uh, and you know I I knew the relationship and I knew how important that was to Big, cause he you know he was cool with Snoop and I was like yo Snoop, you know Big wanna holler at you, and, you know of course he was like a little confused that problem was like hell yeah you know I will I was like I right. I gave him the room number yo come upstairs come holler at Big like you know what I'm saying and he came upstairs and him and Big chopped it up like you know real men just talked and. First of all, they never had no real issues anyway, but just Big just wanted to, you know, let them know, like, yo, dog, that shit is nothing personal with nobody else. I didn't really want that drama anyway to begin with Tupac anyway, you know what I'm saying? You see, I didn't feed in. I didn't, you know, I didn't feed into that shit to make it more than what it was. I kind of just let it happen and let it be. And, uh, nah, we not sitting here happy because he passed. You know, that shit is fucked up. And, uh, you know, we got to do things to try to change this shit and bring this shit to, to some peace. And Snoop was all with it too. And that's basically how the conversation went. Hey, is it true that um, when Biggie was in L.A., um, Snoop, he kept calling him for his location? Who? Snoop. Like, when Biggie was Where in all this L.A. Infor- when is the, where, where, where does this information come from? <laughs> hey, that's your man. I never heard man's... this. I never heard this the whole 25 years hey. I've been doing interviews. I never heard that. Hey, your man's Gene Deal said that, yo. Can't listen to everything Gene Deal say. 
Let's just say that. And much love to Gene Deal. But you can't listen to everything he says. And I'm not going to speak on Gene Deal. I don't give him my time of day. But that's my guy. And I always allow him to tell, I always allow him to tell his story from his side. But people got to understand, he wasn't our security guard, so he wasn't with us every day at all. So I don't know where he get all these other stories from. He wasn't with me and Big the whole time there. The only time we received Gene is when we did something with Puff, because he was Puff security. And we're going to leave that right there. So that wasn't true. When y'all was in L.A., you and Biggie, Snoop never called trying to get Biggie location. Not true. I don't recall none of that. I mean, when we first got to L.A., the first person we bumped into was... So he was in the studio with Puff, playing Puff Beats. So I think if Snoop wanted to find or find our location or anything, I think he could have reached out to Puff. He could have reached out to Daz. Daz was in cahoots with us, in touch with us. I think he could have been, got Biggie location. Or if he wanted to holler at Big, it, it was definitely possible. Now, what's crazy to me is the boy on... Art of Dialogue asked you a straight up question, sees. He said, yes or no? Was this true? That's all he asked. He asked you a simple question. You know, and if you didn't know the answer, that's all you had to say. Why go into some maze of this bringing dad's name up he didn't ask you all of that he asked you if you knew yes or no all you had to say was no i don't know about that i don't know anything about that why did you make it like oh you can't believe anything gene dill says i'll just leave it at that i don't give him my time a day what nobody asked you that who cares who you give your time or day to you're being interviewed and a question was asked so, I mean, right there, it was a red flag. I'm like, what? Like, why are you acting like there's an issue or something? You know what I mean? You was just asked a question. You know? You dudes always be sucking off of, you know, people that's popping right now. You know what I'm saying? To, you know, leave your name in good standing, I guess. You know, with other people. You know what I mean? Instead of just saying no I don't I don't know that information you could he could have moved on to the next question here it is you got the art of dialogue about to dive in further on the question because you want to you know create something out of really nothing because you did not know that information period or if you did you are not electing to bring it out to the public so you could have killed it right there all of this old gene dill you know attempting to shoot down gene dill's credibility was uncalled for in my opinion i get harassed by fans that talk to me about gene dill or his fans or people i don't i don't i don't get into that because, uh, you know, that's something I'm, I don't like to keep reliving. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually lost my homeboy, my brother. And, you know, that's a sensitive thing for me. And I don't owe fans explanations or nobody else. You know, it's not that important to me that I, that I entertain fans and people about this situation. I care about his kids, his mother. That's more important to me, the friends. You know what I mean? And that's a very touchy subject. And he, I feel like he... He touches on it, like, and I want to know what's your point on it, you know, to bring it to the world. All this information you should bring to his, his kids, to his mother, people like that, that it more matters to. You know what I'm saying? So I don't like touching on it. So I really haven't, I don't watch him. So I don't know what he'd be saying that's fabricated or true. As far as us out there, he didn't do a, he didn't, he, he wasn't a, around us a lot. Mm hmm. <laughs> so. It's a touchy subject for you to speak on Big's name and speak about what's going on at that particular time with Big, right? But see, as you've done, like, 
since that time, maybe over a hundred interviews, maybe fifty to a hundred interviews. You know, nobody is interviewing you to speak about you and your life. Only time people call you for interviews, they want to know about what happened with Big. And you are accepting these interviews. Period. So how is it so disheartening and troublesome to you when you are doing countless interviews about big again these interviews that you are going on is not about you and your life it's about another man's life it's about big that's why people call you to get onto their platform to speak about the past, not even the present. They want to talk to you about something that happened 20 years ago, over 20 years ago or so, you know? And you are now saying you don't like to speak about, speak about what's going on with Big when you are speaking about what's going on with Big in this particular interview with the art of dialogue. I don't get that, nor do I understand that (laughs) at all. That, I mean, if I've ever seen a hypocrite in action, it's got to be you. Because for you to even sit there and say that it's so such a worrisome issue to you is appalling it's hideous it's it's uh troublesome you know because again all of these platforms that summon you and more than likely pay you you're 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 basically eating off a Big's name for like the longest. You don't want to talk about what you know. You don't owe anything to the fans or anything like that. And and Gene Dale should speak to his family about certain things and not to the public. But you're con- you constantly talking to the public. Constantly, you're constantly on other people' platforms talking about another man eating off another man. I'm pretty sure you're getting some kickback on these platforms that you're going on, interviewing, talking about another man. Period. I mean, because a lot of times we was doing our own thing. We only see Puff at certain times. When there was certain work to be done. Outside of that, we was out doing our own thing every day. You know, just making our own runs, doing our own thing. We had our other security that Puff was requiring us to. We had our, our own other people. Right, yeah, I do feel you, man. I mean, to be speaking on it so loosely, and he do got his mom out here, his, you know, his daughter, his son. Yeah, that is out of pocket, so I agree. You know, they be, you know, they they don't want to keep, you know, they don't want to keep reliving that. It's not the easiest thing to talk about, you know what I'm saying? Like, I watched, I just watched a documentary that came on TV the other day, sitting home yesterday. I start tearing up. It's like just to relive that. And I don't want to keep, like, that's not one of the best things to relive, you know what I mean? And it's like... We don't want to keep hearing that. And these people keep saying, you know, people hit me and be like, oh, you know more than what you know, this and that. Like, don't never question me about my situation with my friend. And I would never care what a fan say. His mother embraced me. His kids embraced me because they know my love was genuine. But you out here doing interviews and got people questioning me and my loyalty. With my, like, I wouldn't be a stand tall guy for his family if I didn't know something. They would know it. I'm not going to tell these fans or people that barely give a fuck about what's going on or just want to be in the business, that's not my concern to please these people. My concern is to make sure his family and his kids and all that is good. I don't care about pleasing these motherfucking people because these fans will turn their back on you any given Sunday when they feel like it. So I'm not obligated to please them. You know what I'm saying? So, nah, it's not important to me. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So I understand, sees what you're saying. You're saying you don't like to relive the last moments of you being with the notorious B.I.G. That last fatal night. And what I do have to say to that is you are pretty much living that last night almost every time you do an interview and you speak on Big's name. You know, you reliving that. And I don't see how you're not. You know, when you think about your boy and and any the positive vibes and times that y'all shared with one another, you know, how could you not think about at the end of that positive thought, how could you not think about like, man, my boy not here no more. Like, damn. How could you not think about him being directly in front of you when all of them shots rang out? How could you not think about that? That's like genuine and human. I, I don't understand. But check this out. I'm going to let Gene Dill reply to Lil C's. Now, off the art of dialogue and let me give this teaching lesson to Lil Sneeze. I mean, Skeez. I mean, C's. 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 Sorry about that. Bro, I'm not your man. Because, and, and for you say I'm your man, and then you start speaking derogatory towards me, I'm not your man, bro. I never was your man, brother. Because remember on the tour bus when little Kim say, you say another motherfucking word and I'm going to beat the shit out you. I was on that. I came up on that tour bus because Puff told me, don't let nobody touch little Kim. And not now one of you niggas was going to touch her. Trust and believe. Puff told me, go get Lil' Kim off the tour bus and don't let now one of them niggas touch her. Because Lil' Kim was hanging out with Jodeci the night before and Big them got mad. Let's get back and I want you to get straight. So next time you see me, nigga, don't think that. Listen here, that's my man. Because you know who I be with. You know who I run with. You know, when, when they out on the road and God bless them, Bring them back to us. You know who I be with all the time. You understand? So, when you see me on these events, nigga, don't, don't look at me talking about you, man. And if your man's don't come on me with that bullshit, nigga, it's some bullshit. <laughs> Gene, just let it be known. Like, yo, if you run into me anywhere out on these streets, anywhere in any of these events that you may see me in and I may see you, don't run over to me like... You my man and all that. And if you on some bullshit and your man's on some bullshit, then it's going to be some bullshit because I'm on it. That's that's how Gene on it. So you already know what it is. <laughs> you understand? So this is a teaching lesson for you, brother. You can't say somebody, your man, and then go speaking derogatory towards them. So I'm letting you know you're not my man, brother. Not at all. So you ain't got to say that, you understand? And then speak bad shit behind me. All right. First and foremost, if I bring something to the internet or I bring something to the people who watch me, it's because, nigga, it's firsthand information. Why would I bring up Snoop if I didn't hear it, this is something your man said. I said Big said that. Big said that in the studio. This is something your man said. I said Big said that. Studio. Big made that reference. Yo, your man uh, Snoop 
keep calling me, man, trying to find out where we at and what we doing. And I'm hearing this, this nigga's in Miami. That came out of Big's mouth. Snoop, keep calling my phone, trying to find out where we at or what we going out to. And I'm hearing he's in Miami. We was in the studio when you wasn't there. Now I'm going to tell the people why you wasn't there and why you wasn't in the notorious hypnotized video. You got Money L, Stevie J, and D-Rock. No little C's. No little C's. He didn't make it. And the only reason I didn't make it because I spoke too big. Only reason I didn't make it because I had to fly back to New York that night. And then came, did a U-turn and was back that Tuesday or Wednesday. So, C's, why would you say that you were everywhere with Big when you actually wasn't? You know, Gene is dropping some facts about that entire trip out there in L.A. with Bad Boy. And, you know, he's bringing some things to light that, you know, I didn't know. And I'm sure many, many others did not know. Um, you was not with Big the whole time in L.A. You wasn't there with him. You know, and um, Gene did make it clear that he was trying to put Big on. Like, yo, listen, I got this intel. And um, I think you need to be getting up out of here. You know, but... You know, you said what you said, see? So I'm going to let Gene Dill continue on. Keep it right there. Young man got up in the studio. And he said that the night me and D-Rock was out back and I was telling D-Rock, going against everything that I knew was correct with Puff, because Puff was paying me, dog. I wasn't no regular nigga. Yo, I, for three days of work, I was getting. <laughs> Mortgage money. I'm talking to D-Rock. Yo, my man, whatever y'all do, don't come around us. Don't be nowhere. We know I see Puff calling this nigga out and he ain't showing up. D-Rock, man, we ain't going nowhere. We ain't doing nothing like that, bro. You try to make it like to the internet now. Y'all was going everywhere. Y'all was doing everything. And I understand why. Let me break it down to the people by little sneeze. Skis. Seas. Little seas. Bruh. You 12, 13 years old. Your mama let you go on the road. Leave school sixth grade. Let you leave school. And go on the road. Because this is what you want to do. You wasn't a rapper. You said that. I wasn't a rapper. You started. Your job was to roll the joints. We understand that, bro. And I understand your youthfulness then. But you are leading people astray. And I got to let you understand that you're not going to do that with me. So now, Big put you on high orders, on notice. Like, I'm going to see you when I see you. You can't even be around us. Dope Style Production. Shout it out, brother. You can't even be around us. You stuck in the hotel room. 
when Big said that statement, he was in the studio with Charlie Baltimore, and him and Charlie Baltimore was trying to figure out a skit for Puff's album. Now, I'm only repeating what your man said, brother. I have no reason to lie. Snoop been calling me trying to figure out where we going out to. What we doing. Where we hanging at. Man, I'm not calling that nigga back. See, some people are a little bright. And some people understand him and Snoop might have that conversation about him and Tupac. But what you didn't mention was that they had a conversation about Big sending them people over there or Big getting on the radio, having that motherfucking uh, Winnebago shot up in New York. Did they have that conversation? Did they have that conversation, brother? Because there's some real gangster niggas that want to get that big. That's what Mace said to me after he came from the basketball game. Nigga, I'm good. They want big and puff. They want big and puff. Now, niggas can change what they want to change any day, but get on the motherfucking line. Put your 50 Gs up. Get on the lie detector test. Oh, it's more... It's more to where this is going from. And some people going, yo, I got up early morning because, listen to me, man. Niggas was telling me, yo, Gene, you know, a dude that I got a lot of like, Gene, don't say nothing about him, man. You know, he was baited into that. Man, fuck that. He's a grown man. And I told dude just like that. I told dude like that, man, I'm doing it. He ain't call me back. He, I guess he upset me. No, I don't care. You understand? But I'm going to let the people know. We're not going to go and not let this stone be unturned. Because this nigga said something about you can't believe everything Gene says. But he don't listen to Gene. So, like I'm a liar or something like that. Nigga, I'm not never. I don't look at a man in the eye and got a lie to him or feel some kind of weight, nigga. Not at all. You went from little C's. You went from... Big ain't had no business being out in Cali. To, oh, Big love Cali. He wanted to, you know, be out there all the time. You change your story, bro. They got copies of tapes and, and videos of that shit that you see in there, bro. I seen it going down when old boy kept calling Big, talking about, yo, Big, where y'all at? Y'all coming through? Y'all coming through? We gonna be here. We gonna be there. Big them never showed up. Why didn't you tell him? You say, only time we seen Big Gene them is when he was with Puff. How many times was that in Cali? Soul Train Awards. You wasn't at the studio. And the night Big got killed. Three. Three times. All right, you already know what it is. Yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section below. You let me know if you think Little C's did a poor job as far as answering the question from the Art of Dialogue about Big Gene Deal. Also, let me know if you think Little C's played a important part in Sway and Biggie's thought process that last fatal day when Big Gene Dill, who was security for Bad Boy Entertainment, whether he was Puff Security or Big Security or Little Kim Security, don't matter. He was still a staff member of the security team for Bad Boy Entertainment. He came to their star with vital information regarding his life and the life of others. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think this was a big deal or not? I certainly do. I think that Gene Dill is an important piece to what actually happened during the night of the fatal 
shooting that took away our young brother, the notorious B.I.G. Far too many of our stars leave the planet without us knowing its fans knowing exactly what happened. The fans are the ones who build up these stars and they should know what happened and what's going on with the people that they actually vote for in their heart. So you let me all know what you think in the comment section below. I love you all except for the ones I don't. Peace.